once again welcome back everybody we've got more age of empires it's me once again as the opposite but this time i'm up against an opponent who's playing as the chinese jag x387 is my opponent and they chose the chinese for this map lipany i don't usually see chinese opponents on lipany usually i find delhi or Rus players or English players here on Lipany, but it's very rare to see Chinese players. That said, the Chinese are, I think it's a civilization that we haven't seen much of, so maybe it, maybe it deserves a little bit of a talk about what they can do and how to prepare for them. The Chinese, they can do very quick uh, unit composition transitions. So maybe you're being attacked by a bunch of spearmen and you decide, oh, I'll make archers to take care of all their spearmen. Well, suddenly the Chinese can get their imperial officials to, or these imperial, imperial officers to oversee their stables. And now the stables produces units twice as fast and suddenly they've made a ton of horsemen and now your archers have been countered by this big uh, horseman ball. So they're kind of like the Mongols in a sense that they can suddenly push out a bunch of one type of unit just all of a sudden. They also have access to these things called dynasties, which is where they, they have the option of building both of their landmarks. So they build both of their age two landmarks and then they enter a dynasty. So maybe they build first the Barbican of the Sun, which is kind of a defensive, like a, it's like a tower or a keep. And then they build their uh, Imperial Academy, which increases like the rate that gold is generated for the uh, Chinese player. So let's say they make both of those landmarks. They enter something called the Song Dynasty and that lets them build villagers very quickly. So, your opponent could be going for a macro style where they just want to get a big economic advantage by building both of their uh, landmarks and then entering the Song Dynasty and then building a second town center and just mass producing villagers. That could be a strategy to take against me since I'm going with my two town center opening Maybe he'll have a bigger economic advantage, uh, advantage if he goes for uh, his own kind of economic or macro style play. The game will go very long, but the Chinese, they often get the advantage in longer games. Alternatively, the Chinese can reach the castle age very quickly. If they focus on just food and gold, they can all of a sudden make it to the castle age and start hitting you with these very strong units. Uh, they have unique man-at-arms units called palace guards, which move very quickly. Oh, and I was happy with this. I decided to send out some horsemen to try and harass his villagers here. You can see that town center with the gunpowder turret does a lot of damage to my horsemen, so I need to keep them out of range. The villagers are pretty nasty too. They take their knives out. They're willing to fight my horsemen. Fortunately, I do have another horseman here. I should probably send him in. And we get a villager, so that was big. But as I was saying, uh, the Chinese could go for that macro style, get into the Song Dynasty, make two town centers, produce a bunch of units, or they can make it to the Castle Age where they get their unique man-at-arms unit, the Palace Guard. And they can also get a unique mangonel unit called the Nest of Bees. And nests of bees with uh, man-at-arms are very strong. You just sort of move out, you protect the nest of bees with your units, and you use the nest of bees to ideally target villagers. Because clumped villagers die to nest of bees so fast. One or two good volleys will completely wipe out six villagers and now the game has just suddenly swung in their favor alternatively you can use the nest of bees to target down archers and usually people make a lot of archers in the second age so it can be really strong against people who just mass archers and don't really mix in any other units fortunately i'm not doing that i'm not 
just producing archers. In fact, I'm mostly producing horsemen and I'm starting to mix some archers in. I haven't seen too much aggression from my opponent, but I would like to get more archers. The problem is I seem to have accidentally sent villagers to keep gathering stone. I don't need stone. We already have our second town center over here. We're gathering from the deer that are nearby and we're chopping down the trees that are nearby. We don't need the stone. We can use this extra stone to make walls or to ma uh, make emplacements on outposts, but we don't need the stone. I need to get these villagers off of stone. There we go. What I need right now is wood. Yeah, there they go. Axes out, we're gonna go chop down some trees. Don't like that this scout is hanging out here. We should probably try and kill it. It's pretty much got eyeballs on my entire army here. So we, we really don't want him sticking around. And we need to scout on our own side here. We need to find out what he's up to. We're seeing more villagers on gold and a lot of villagers on food still. Only one other barracks, which usually when an opponent is gonna go early aggression, they make archery ranges rather than barracks. So my opponent's taking kind of a defensive stance here. He can use the barracks to make spearmen and man at arms and yeah, this is his third landmark. This is to get him to the uh, to the castle age. So it was a fast castle opening from my opponent. So that means I'm about to be attacked by a mix of man-at-arms, spearmen, and nest of bees. My opponent will make nest of bees from the astronomical clock tower, and these two barracks are going to make a spearmen and their man-at-arms unit, the palace guard. I decide to go for a quick counterattack here. This northern uh, divide, this little channel here, we can still make it through. So we're going to try and do some economic damage. We did notice a villager going over here to make walls. This will be our second villager kill if we can secure it. I need to send my units that way. He's responding with some spearmen. I brought archers along, so that way he can't just solve this problem with uh, spearmen. Yeah, let's finish that villager off. Now we're going to move in. At the same time, I've completely redistributed my workforce back home. After seeing my opponent make it to the castle age, I've realized, ooh, that's the third villager right there, but we need to get out. That's a lot of spearmen. And here come the palace guards, wisely targeting my uh, archers. So now we likely need to run. Yep, we're gonna have to go the long way around. I don't wanna run past his barbican. My units were gonna come through here. We don't want that, we wanna go around. And these palace guards move quickly. They have increased movement speed and a little less armor, so they can really chase down my archers. But we've completely redistributed our villagers, like I was saying. We took nearly everyone off of wood to gather gold and food, and that's allowed us to make it up to the uh, castle age. So we're gonna go culture wing. And we actually had some uh, spare stone from accidentally rallying units to that stone outcropping. So we put down another town center. This is super greedy, but I'm not too intimidated by the units that I see he has fielded just yet. I mean, the palace guards and the, um, the nest of bees, it's gonna be nasty, but if I can keep my units moving, uh, they're not, the, the Chinese units are not gonna be very mobile. The nest of bees move very slowly. So as long as I can keep my units moving and just kind of engaging and disengaging with his army, uh, we'll live long enough to get out the units that we desperately need, which are crossbowmen and knights. And then maybe like a mix of horsemen and archers. I wouldn't be opposed to those as well. My scout fortunately notices his army coming through. And this is when I need to pull these villagers because the nest of bees is going to fire on them. Okay, good. I grab them. They're going to retreat. I'm going to just send them to another berry patch. That's the nice part. I have so many options. I should stay mobile because I can always go to another resource patch. Not a bad idea to make camel archers. They have a decent attack value. So they actually do really good damage against the spearmen. And they do okay damage versus the palace guard. My archers are pretty much useless against the palace guards. So I'd like to see myself get some, um, get some more camel archers. 
I wisely converted this outpost and gave it a uh, arrow emplacement. So now it's it's actually firing arrows down on his units. We're gonna get a few kills because of it, it looks like. And this is when I wanna stay mobile, keep retreating, don't let his units fight with mine. We're gonna stay mobile. He really wants to uh, find a villager clump. There's just like maybe four here, so that's not ideal. He knows that he can go for my second town center, which is probably the right move. It doesn't have as much health. It's only at 2,400. But here he is engaged with my forces. See, the moment we touch and our armies start to battle, I just instantly lose units. So I need to always disengage the moment I see his units battling with mine. But now we've got some more camel archers. We're trying to target down the nest of bees, and we did age up. We are making crossbowmen. So with the crossbowmen engaging, they're very strong against his units. And he accidentally got his units a little too close to my second town center, and we were able to retreat some villagers inside. And they were able to shoot at his units. And so now his army has really thinned out. And he doesn't have any more spearmen because my camel archers just traded so well with them. So now my cavalry are just gonna burn down the nest of bees. I really just don't see any reinforcements coming from him. My scout, great positioning here, just hanging out in the stealth forest. I'm just gonna forget about these other units and send my cavalry out to see if we can um, find some villagers out on the map. Ooh, lose the scout there, unfortunate. I really liked having the scout here in this uh, stealth forest. We're gonna retreat, gather up our forces. We've got a lot of crossbowmen. That's what we want. The crossbowmen are so effective versus these man-at-arms. As long as, as long as I've got some unit tanking, like this lancer or this man-at-arms, the crossbowmen are doing work. They're all on the backside, yeah, gunning things down. Find a few spearmen back here. We're gonna try to burn down this village, but it's too strong, and he's brought even more spearmen out. But we're getting our own wins on the map. So we've been trading effectively with his army, so we can actually stand outside his base and maybe put some pressure on with his battering ram. We're also getting some upgrades. We're getting the preservation of knowledge, so future upgrades are all going to be cheaper. We're also getting agriculture, so our farms are going to gather a lot faster. In terms of blacksmith upgrades, looks like we just have the plus one ranged attack. But we're starting to mix in some more military production. So we're getting more archery ranges, more barracks. I like seeing that. I've got a lot of income right now. Like my food and wood income is just so high. We need to spend these resources and I'll spend them on anything. I'll, I'll take spearmen, I'll take archers, I'll take anything. So we send the battering ram forward. He's coming forward with his units. Anything to draw out his uh, palace guards so that my crossbowmen can take shots. But unfortunately, if the nest of bees hits my archers, oof, nasty damage there. But we can retreat. We move a lot quicker than that nest of bees. The ram's trying to get to work on the uh, barbican, but he's got units here. Oof, oh. My poor crossbowman. We do have cavalry. We can start to attack his nest of bees. And the, the crossbowman ball has stayed pretty healthy. He needs to target fire with his nest of bees. He has to trust that his units are gonna defend his uh, nest of bees and that this is doing damage, the uh, barbican, because he needs to kill these archers. They're the real issue. And he wisely sent his villagers to repair. I'm going to start targeting them down with my archers, but, or my uh, crossbowmen, but we maybe get one or two villagers there. I'm going to keep the pressure up. I'm continually making villagers on the back of this, so our, our economy is getting stronger and stronger, and my hope is that we can just overwhelm him with numbers. And it seems to be a good idea because a lot of his villagers are up here on the front lines. If I can send a group to, like, here, we're going to start getting villager kills while trading with his army. And we've already gotten maybe four or five villager kills this game so far, so I feel like we have an economic advantage. 
So there's all that extra military production. We've even got a siege workshop. And we've also put down a mosque. We're going to start to try and grab some uh, relics off the map. In fact, there you go. Looks like I've got my first monk coming out, or my imam. He's got a trebuchet, which is really interesting. I, I haven't really shown any forward buildings except this outpost. Interesting that he goes for the trebuchet, because it's a very expensive unit, and unless you can put it to work right away, I feel like it just isn't worth it. And I think he wants springalds and more nests of these. That would have been my guess, but oh well. So you can see, I'm just making whatever units I can. I've got literally everything here. Archers, spearmen, man-at-arms, camel archers, crossbowmen, lancers. We're like, we'll, we'll just take it. If we can make it, we'll make it. We want to just leverage our roaring economy here. We're also going to put down a keep over here. It seemed like a nice spot. We can secure the sacred site. Not sure where the last sacred site is, but I would suspect it's up here in the darkness. That's how Lippany usually has it. Three pretty equally distributed across the center of the map. Getting some more blacksmith upgrades. Military academy, so we'll produce units faster. Looks like we're also getting some melee armor since he has all melee units. That's definitely a good idea. And we'll put down some siege units of our own. This Springald is very good at targeting down... Uh, the nests of bees that my opponent's been making. And this ram will always help because it'll put pressure on the barbican. We're just going to scoop that relic and bring it on home. More military production coming because I just cannot seem to spend my resources fast enough. Gold has been fairly hard to come by. I should probably distribute some villagers from wood to gold or wood to food because so we definitely have an excess of wood right now oh those nests of bees do great damage to pretty much any unit ouch but i send some crossbowmen forward to try and get that villager kill at least now the spring alds trying to snipe down the nest of bees but I could only do so much and you can see he's producing units quickly but i feel like I mean, my army is just big and growing bigger. I feel like I could just overwhelm him with numbers. And I'm still sending knights around the map to try and find ways into his base, but this was actually walled off. There was a wall right here. My units just didn't understand, and they're doubling back. I'll do some walling myself. I really want this sacred site secured. In fact, I think I have... Yeah, I have a, a mom heading that way to secure the sacred site. I decide I'm getting advantages on the map. Let's trade armies. I'm almost at 200, and I'm floating all these resources. Let's engage, see if we can't uh, thin armies. Really don't want these clock tower nest of bees hitting my archers in the back, so I'm happy that they're fighting with um, my units up front. And I send some crossbowmen to the side, and I'm going to target fire his um, villagers. Like I said... If we're engaging here, he still has villagers out on the map, so we're getting villager kills while we're trading armies. If everything dies, that's fine. The fact that we've already killed ooh, five, six villagers over here, that's the real victory. He can't reproduce those too quickly. I mean, he might have gone Song Dynasty on the back of this, but hard to say. Now I don't see any more nest of bees, so I can send my ranged units forward. The springalds hurt, so does the barbican, but these units, if, yeah, if we can get on top of his villagers, that's even more villager kills. That's huge. Oof. Big wins there, big wins. I'm feeling like my opponent is on the ropes. He's grabbing up relics, but I've already got a sacred site. I think we're going for another. We've got good upgrades. We've got all our 1-1 upgrades. Grabbing more relics. And we're starting to move into our farm economy. We seem to be transitioning to it pretty well. Yeah, in fact, even more farms over here. 
with these extra units coming in, I don't think my opponent can hold. So he surrenders. It was an interesting matchup. I'm not sure if the fast castle worked out for my opponent as much as he'd hoped it would. Sometimes just getting siege engineering, making a bunch of archers, and putting pressure on my second town center is the way to go. Either way, I'm really happy with my scouting, recognizing the fast castle, and responding to it appropriately. Hope to catch you for the next game.